Hello, in this potentially brief video, we're going to freestyle and see how far we get, and hopefully it's quick and to the point. We're going to pick up after the Unreal Engine Jump Start video and go over a few more sequencer options that you have. So if you haven't seen this video, the Unreal Engine Jump Start for my VFX and animation friends, watch that first, then come back here because we're going a little deeper on some of the concepts that were introduced in that video. Where that video landed, we were in a shot. For example, you hit play and here's your character moving. And in this case, it's uh, nothing crazy. Oops, I actually forgot to look through the camera. I just have a simple track on, uh, a look at setting on that. Don't know if we covered in the last video. So if I go to the camera just to show that, there's this look at track settings. You can add what you wanna have looked at, turn on tracking. In this case, I had to bump and offset because the track is at her feet. So just bump it up in Z a little bit and see, you can offset your uh, look at a little bit. But anyway, so I have a camera and my female here with a little bit of a transform and some, uh, some cycles added, right? So we covered that in the other video. In that other video, we made two shots. So back to the content browser, here's, here's one shot. We made two shots and then we strung them together in yet another level sequence where we added two shots together. That works and that's fine. The good thing about sequencer and level sequences, so a level sequence is just a container of information. You can put all of your shot data with one camera and your animation in one shot and then put it in another shot and then put them together. Though I often get asked, well, what if, what if I want this animation and I want multiple cameras to cover it? So we're gonna go over two additional things you can do that the the slight catch here is there's no right answer. There's no one way to do it, which kind of frustrates some people because they want to say, don't tell me all the options, just tell me the best way to do it. There's kind of not a best way. There's a way that works for you. It's like, you know, going to the beach, you can take one freeway, you could take a different freeway, you could ride your bike there, you would depend on where you live. Uh, you could walk there. You know, there's no, as long as you get to the beach, that's what matters. As long as you output some cinematics, that's what matters. There's some ways are better than others. Um, but it still is kind of situation dependent. Like walking's fine if you don't have a car, but you know, you might want to drive, but then you have parking to deal with. So again, totally up to you. My goal here is to show you some of the options that you have with sequencer. In this one particular shot, I, I just happen to call it shot one. In animation, usually in one shot, you have one camera, but Unreal doesn't, you know, that's not a thing for it. So let's talk about what you can do in here. Um, I'm going to delete this half of this here. We haven't talked about this in the other class so much as this camera cuts. This allows you to have more than one camera in a shot if you choose. The default of this is you'll usually find when you make a new uh, spawnable camera that you know that your, your camera cuts track comes automatic and it just fills up the whole thing with whatever camera got created. However, I'm gonna eject out of the camera here just to get a little bit of a, a bigger view here. I'm gonna add another camera just for a super extreme of a super high top view. So I'm gonna add another camera just using the spawnable button here, which means if, if I hit this button versus drag one in from the cinematics, this camera will only exist in this shot. If I have other level sequences, it won't be in those. It's not getting added permanently to the outliner. It's only gonna be there when you have this shot open. Hit this button and I'll get, uh, you know, Cine Camera Actor 2. I'm gonna hit F2 so I can rename this. I'll just call, it, call this Top Cam to make bluntly obvious that it's a different camera. Otherwise, the names are kind of similar. And here's my view from it. I'm gonna go even higher, right? I'm just gonna get the whole world here. If I am clicking on this icon here, that is my Top Cam specifically, and that is my view from my Top Cam. Right, so I get the whole action from way up there. But when you click here on camera cuts, that shows you the cameras that you have chosen for this particular shot as a whole, I guess you could call it. So if I hit play, it's gonna play my camera cut from only this camera because this is what drives when you're running your shot and this is selected and this is also what carries through when you bring it up into higher sequences. This is what defines what camera gets used. I want this camera in the first half. Right, so I'm going to click here. I want this camera, the Cine Camera Actor, this one, right? Same same view. 
I want this camera, Cine Camera Actor, to be used for the first part of the shot. And then once I hit here, I want to switch over and use the top cam. So in the camera cuts, what I do is I just hit add a camera where the playhead is, new binding, and I want to add the top cam as my camera to take over when I hit that spot, right? So right now you're looking at it and you're like, hey, how come it's only that first camera still? This is really important. Keep an eye on where this button is. If I click this, I'm only going to see that for the whole length. If I click this, I'm only going to see that for the whole length. But the overall final output when you would potentially hit the render button is going to be what's defined here in the camera cuts. So I'm going to click that button, go back to the beginning of the sequence, it's going to play through here, then it's going to pop over to the top cam to play the rest of the sequence. That is a viable way of working. You can do that. I'm going to show a slightly alternate but similar kind of version, and that is using a sub scene in your sequence. So let's let's try not to make too mess of this. I'm going to say that the animation in this shot is all that I want. I actually don't want cameras in this shot. And I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. Let me just delete this, delete this. I'm going to delete the whole camera cuts. I'm going to delete these two cameras. All that's going on in this level sequence now is my character from far, far away. You can see her way down there. All right, so she's way down there doing her thing. That is the only thing animated in this particular level sequence. I, I just deleted everything else. You're going to think, well, how, how are you supposed to render anything? As is, you can't in the sense of that there's, I don't even have a camera to render through, but that's because I'm looking at this from a different way of organizing uh, my project. So this is a self-contained, let's see, it's called shot one. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to my content browser and I'm actually going to rename it just to try and make life a little easier here. I'm going to call this char anim. So this is my level sequence where the only thing going on is animation of the character. And this, especially when you're working with more people, this probably is a viable way of working. If you're in the Unreal Fellowship and you're doing your own short all by yourself and you don't need to collaborate with anybody, this still may be useful for you. And it's good to know that this is how it works because you know eventually you work with people, but you, you may not have to do this level of detail when you're working on your own project. But definitely when you're working with others, this comes in handy. So this is a self-contained level sequence called Char Anim with just a character walking. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make another level sequence. Remember a level sequence is just a container. I'm gonna make another one. I'll call this scout game level, you know, whatever. Cause I'm gonna just scout the camera a little bit for all the action that's going on. So I'm going to double click and it opens a brand new sequencer, scout game level, nothing in it like we've seen before. However, this time I'm going to pull in that sub scene. I'm going to pull in the animation of the character at this point in this scout game level. I hit play. Nothing's happening, right? Because just like we've seen before, it's just a basic no, there's nothing in here. So we're not going to see anything. I'm going to add a track and I'm going to add a sub scene. So a sub scene itself is the terminology and you should almost say like add a sub sequence because really what you're pointing at when you do this, you're pointing at another sequence and bringing it in to this level sequence. I add the track itself is just is still empty. And now I add the sequence that I want to bring in here and I want to bring in the char anim. Oh, it comes in where your playhead was. My playhead's at the end, so I'm just going to slide it back here. All right. So now when I hit play, I get my animation. But the animation is not occurring in this level sequence. The only thing this level sequence holding at the moment is a subscene track that's pointing to that other level sequence, the char anim. Why might you do this? You might have one person working on the character animation or say yourself working on the char character animation a little bit separate than maybe an effects uh, animation that you have that you're working on. And then maybe there's like a disco scene. So somebody else is kind of working on like the lighting effects and having all this crazy animation going on. Each person can be working separately in their own level sequence. And then you have, you know, in this case, it's called 
scout game level, but you could call it your master sequence that you're pulling in a bunch of different sub scenes and pulling those in. And the advantage there is, you know, I can, I can change the timing of what's going on here as well. Right. So I can hit play and she's already halfway done with what she's doing. So I can adjust, you know, my clips a little bit, but that aside, why else might you do this? This action is going to happen. And then in this level sequence, I can add multiple cameras. So I just added three cameras in this. And from here, it's not that much different than what we've seen before. I have three cameras. So let's, uh, what am I looking through first? Let's look through this camera first and go to the beginning of the shot, right? So where is she? I'm going to go really close. So my first shot, come here, you. My first shot with using camera one. I mean, I'm saying the word shot, but let's just say the first camera, this cine camera actor, is going to be here really close. So I can hit play. She kind of instantly walks out of scene. So it's not that exciting, right? So maybe, you know, I might have to back up a little bit. You know, I could deal with focus. We dealt with focus and all that stuff in the other one. So I'm not going to bore you with that here. But let's just say I get a little bit of it from this first camera here. And then as she walks, I want to go ahead and cut to camera two. Whoops. Got to grab the end of that. Come here. There we go. Right. So camera two, I got to look through camera two here. This, I'm going to make a side view. Come here, you, at that point. I'm going to have her walk for a little bit from this camera's point of view. I need to add that I want this camera to take over. So I'm going to go to add camera. I can also, I can just grab it here as well. I can say camera two. So from here, she's going to be walking. And then let's say from here, because I don't want to move the camera, I'm just going to slip over here jump over to camera three, look through it. And that's way here. Let's do some like artsy shot. I got a really low, low camera and see if she like runs at it. Uh, I need to add it to my, well, actually I'm viewing it here. So I don't, I haven't clicked this to designate. I want to look through the mashed camera here. I'm going to just look through there. So she comes running at the camera. Oh, I missed her feet, whatever. All right. So let's go really in close here. So it's just going to land on her feet at the end. And she's hovering, but who cares? So then let's go back and drop in camera three to take over there. So just add a camera, camera three. All right, so now if this is selected, all I'm going to see is that camera's point of view for the whole time. But the camera cuts track is defining, again, what this overall level sequence is going to use as the camera. So I click here to have that take over. So it's going to go through camera one, then camera two, then camera three. Camera one, camera two, camera three. All right. You can also add, again, you can add other kinds of sub scenes. Now, the difference between this and a master sequence is when we were doing the master sequence, in that case, you're building a sequence of shots that are end to end, right? So if you go back to that other video, we had shot one play and then shot two play and then shot three play. So it's a very linear workflow. In this case, we're playing multiple uh, sub scenes or those other level sequences in parallel. So I can have the animation track running at the same time. I can have the effects track running and I can have the uh, lighting track running and they're all playing simultaneously, but they're also available. I can double click here to char anim that opens into the sequencer. It opens the level sequence for just the character animation that I can make changes to if I want, you know, if I actually want her to get back on the ground here, I could just nudge her down just a little bit. Bonk, right? So now I've fixed that. My character animation is fixed. I save my changes. I go back out up to this top level and it's fixed at the top level as well. So again, the, hopefully you get the idea that you can separate the animations into multiple level sequences and then pull them into a, you know, a, a parent of sorts level sequence. Again, they're all just level sequences and you can pull them into each other kind of like what you can do static wise with the different levels. Um, but here you're doing it on a time-based uh, workflow. You can add your cameras here. You could also add audio track, right? I can come here and add an audio track, but I could also add the audio track here in the char anim and that's going to get pulled in as well because it's, you know, kind of 
built into that down there. So you can mix and match and put stuff kind of wherever works that works for you. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do and how you can work with level sequences, uh, specifically how to use subscene and where you can put different cameras to cover different shots. All right, enjoy.